Alright folks, I wanted to take you through <coughs> a program here that uses loops pretty heavily. Uh, just as another example, I had a student ask me uh, what loops are good for um, and basically just how they how they work in office hours. And so I thought maybe we needed to take a, a deeper look at um, how you might structure these. So what I did is created a program, uh, a really simple sort of classic math program that calculates prime numbers for you. Um, and this is what this program outputs it shows you a sort of graphical distribution of all the prime numbers so this is zero and over here is a thousand and it's calculating whether each of these is prime so right here this is you know we're in the five hundreds and so you can see here kind of a visual distribution of the prime numbers uh, and they appear to be um, kind of random they occur in these sorts of weird doublets here or like sort of these semi doublets uh, and that's interesting uh, there might be a pattern to this, there might not. Uh, people don't really know. Um, but anyways, how did I do this? Well, uh, let me walk you through this program. Uh, first things first, I declared some variables, and I'm going to have something called a prime flag. And this is just going to be a boolean that tells me whether the number I'm currently testing is a prime. And the, the mode for this program is that we're just going to assume everything is prime and change this to false if it's not prime. Okay, uh, let's set up a screen. Um, since this is a pretty simple program, we're not going to use set up and draw. We're just going to set up a screen, run the program, and then call it a day. Uh, this screen is going to be a thousand pixels wide, or a thousand pixels wide, and fifty pixels tall, like you just saw. Uh, and then the first thing we're going to do is loop through. Uh, and actually, this comment is wrong now. We're going to loop through the first one thousand integers and just test them. So this is our variable n that we're going to test here, and we're going to basically say, well, when when n is some number, is it prime or not? Uh, and that's our fundamental question. So what we've got going here is uh, we start off with n equals 2. Okay, well, why? Why don't we test 0 and 1? Well, 0 isn't really a prime number, and 1 doesn't fit the definition of a prime number because, of course, it's divisible by 1 in itself uh, because it is 1. Um, and then we're going to let this loop, so this for loop, we're going to let it start at 2. We're going to let it run until n is equal to 1,000. Okay, As soon as n is 1,001, this loop will quit. And we're going to get there by 1s. So this loop is allowing us to, to change n by 1 all the way up to 1,000. So for every, every step along the way here, um, we need to check to see if that number is actually prime. So we get into this loop and n starts off at 2. So we run all of this code right here. All this code in yellow gets run for every single n. So right now n is 2. So we check. Um, we need to loop through all the numbers that are less than 2 to see if they divide evenly into n. Um, so we start off at, we called it, I called it check. We start off at 2 and we're actually going to only test up to uh, n divided by 2. Because if you think about it, as soon as you get up to half the number, that's the biggest number that's going to divide into anything evenly. So we don't we can save ourselves a whole bunch of work. Uh, there's no point in checking seven if your candidate is eight. Seven is never going to divide evenly into eight. That just doesn't make any sense. Uh, in fact, the last number that will divide evenly into eight is four. So really, once you get to four, you might as well stop uh, checking to see if it's prime. There's actually probably a way, way, way smarter way to, to check these numbers, and I'll let you figure that out if you're interested in primes. Um, and we're going to let check go up by 1 as well. So then we get in here, so now we're inside this loop. So now we're in a, in a double loop here, and so this can get kind of confusing for people. Remember at this point, n is 2, and we're checking all of the numbers up to n divided by 2. So we're going to check, in this case, uh, nothing. Uh, because you can't divide by zero, and you can't, you know, it doesn't matter if you divide by one, everything's divided by one. So two is going to pass. And what I mean by that is we're going to do, uh, we're going to check two. So check is going to get to be two. Um, in fact, actually, it's not. Check isn't going to get to be anything. This loop isn't going to run uh, for the first iteration because uh, n divided by two is one, in, you know, because of this. And so this loop never runs, so we never actually have the chance to check to see if prime flag can be turned to false. Okay, so we exit this loop right away, it runs really quick, and we end up with checking here. Well, prime flag is still true, because that's how we started, and you end up, uh, I, I printed them out here at the bottom, uh, and then we're just going to draw a line down the screen, and that line is 
at the x coordinate n for both its start and end point. So that those are just the lines you saw drawing down the screen. And then before I finish the loop, so here's the end of our n loop. We just set prime flag equal to true uh, to reset the whole thing. And then we get jumped back up to here. Now n becomes 3. And then we do the whole thing again. Well, let's check. Where are we going to check up to? Well, we're going to check up to 1.5. Well, that's still not going to work. So none of this code happens. We end up with prime flag still true, and we get 1 at 3. And 3 is a prime number. Uh, things don't get interesting until this starts to get up into larger numbers, you know, and like, you know, above single digits. Um, you know, we get to a, a number that's like, you know, 150. Well, now you can actually check some serious numbers up to 75 and see if any of them are prime. So what happens? Uh, well, if n divided by check has a remainder, then it's a, it could be a prime, is our check here. And this is the big idea. Uh, and you've probably never seen this operator before. This is called the modulus operator. It's spelled like this. The modulus operator is kind of like division, but it's asking the question, uh, what's the remainder? And if the remainder is zero, that means that our number isn't prime. And that's the crux of this whole checker here. So if we check some n, and one of those numbers divides in evenly, which is this statement right here. This is the statement of division but evenly. There's no remainder, right? E equals zero. Then that's not a prime number. And we're going to set that to false. It's going to come here and say, oh, nope, it's false. So it isn't prime flag. Prime flag isn't true. And uh, it's not going to print a line. It's going to skip over that and move on. Uh, reset prime flag and start back over. And so you end up getting uh, a picture that looks something like this. Uh, and we could actually, you know, change this range if we really wanted to. So we only have a thousand picture, a thousand pixel window. Uh, but we could do something like, you know, let's let's look at, you know, let's start off at a thousand and go all the way up to two thousand. You know, is there a pattern there? So we saw what the other one looked like. And you can see here that, uh, of course, you know nothing worked. Oh, well, of course it didn't work because we're putting it at n. So we have to subtract off that 1,000 here because we have to adjust for our window. And so let's see what that looks like. Well, it's a, it's actually looks like a, it's a completely different pattern than the one we saw before for 0 to 1,000, well, 2 to 1,000. Uh, and that's interesting, and this kind of has boggled people's minds about prime numbers uh, for a really long time. So anyways, I'm going to shoot this code up. Feel free to play around with the primes. Uh, if you don't understand this part, feel free to come in and ask questions. That's kind of the, the newest thing. Um, fantastic. We'll see you guys in office hours.